29,900 degrees centigrade. 41,700 degrees centigrade as well. That's pretty uh, warm. That's toasty. <laughs> that is toasty! So it would have been a 38 mile wide fireball. We have the Shanghuan Impact Crater, China. Uh, if you would, that was in the Lunar and Planetary Science Conference, which actually was presented back in 1988. So? So you actually found it. Good work, John. Thank you. Okay, what does the text say about it? So the temperatures of some micro and crypto crystals of rich Al quartz in Shanghuan were about that would be twenty uh, nine nine hundred C and twenty nine thousand yeah twenty nine thousand nine hundred degrees centigrade forty one thousand seven hundred degrees centigrade as well. That's pretty that, warm. That's toasty. <laughs> that is toasty. Um, also, that would be aluminum rich quartz. Yeah. AL is rich. aluminum, right? AL, AL. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Aluminum rich quartz. Yep. And so the temperature of some micro and crypto crystals of rich aluminum quartz in Shangwan are about 29,900C to 41,700C. I think Dr. Zhu. Jian Zhong, forgive me if I butcher that, for electron microprobe analysis. This work was supported in part by NSF of China. Okay. So Na just, National Science Foundation, I'm guessing. Yeah, I think so. So, again, 29,900C. Now, that's page two, isn't it? Yeah. You, okay. What you can do is see where it says print this page? Yeah. There you go. So we're here. So the Shangwan Impact Crater is located in northeastern China. It is approximately 95 kilometers northeast of Shangchun City, the capital of Jinlin Province. We'll talk about that province more in a minute. The crater was discovered in 1984 by investigation of Landsat image where there are a central uplift in a discontinuous circular river system and by following field work on the ground. The crater is 30 kilometers in diameter. Uh, 44. That's big. Yeah, 30 kilometers. 20, that's 20 miles. There's a mountainous area about 600 meters high at the center of the crater. So that's the central uplift. Yes, yes. It's, six, it's 600 meters high. So when the... When, the, the central uplift, Randall, do, do, do you want to describe what happens when a, when a hypervelocity impact hits and then we get a central uplift in the yeah, aftermath? It, it's sort of the rebound effect. You have this compression that takes place and then you have a compression release and it bounds back. Everybody has seen what happens if you throw a, a rock into a pond. There will be an upward splash right in the middle. You know, if you look at the old science we used to see in in, in middle school they would show us these science uh documentaries and you would see something falling into the into the glass of milk i think it was or whatever the liquid was and two things happen you have this this uh like an upward forming splash in the middle and then you have the uh radially emanating rings moving outward from that but now of course, in a liquid, that upward splash in the middle just drops back down. But if you're looking at melted rock, oftentimes it'll come up and then it's rapidly cooling as it comes up. And then it will crystallize as a solid. So it's a combination of this uplift, which is this rebound effect, and rapid cooling. And then typically you will have a central uplift. If the crater is large enough, and once you get to about 20 miles, well, heck, you don't have to have 20 miles. You can get to about five miles, I think, even less than that, maybe three miles typically. And of course, a lot of it has to do with the nature of the impactor, the angle of approach, the, the composition of the target rock and so on. But typically at five miles, you're going to usually 
get an, a central uplift. And then you might have multiple rings um, enclosing that central uplift. So, you know, John, since I've been getting more and more familiar with ground news and all the capabilities and, and powerful attributes that it has, one of the things that I've really come to appreciate is the blind spot. Because my interest is in looking at a at an issue holistically. I want to know what is the left saying? What is the right saying? And I've realized years ago that often one side or the other of the political spectrum will not touch certain stories that doesn't do not seem to support their particular narrative. Ground News has provided a very powerful tool called the blind spot, where we can quickly and easily see within the within the press uh, where the stories are being ignored. Can let's take a look at how that works, John. Absolutely. So, for example, this is just uh, live while we're recording this here. Human rights violations found at Alligator Alcatraz is I a see story that down there. Yes, right. Zero percent of right wing sources polled are viewing that. So if you're in the if you're on the right wing, you may not be hearing this story. If you're on the left wing, House Oversight Committee probes billions in Minnesota social services fraud. Zero percent reporting by major left-wing news sources. So if you want to break down the barriers between left and right, if you want to peek out of your own silo, ground news can be a great tool. That's that's powerful. Uh, yeah, look, I mean, and it's quite eye-opening, actually. And I can see how this is really going to enhance one's insight and give one a broader perspective on the stories of the day. So I've started using this tool now already and find it to be um, extremely valuable. What can I say? Because, again, I'm trying to get a holistic perspective on the, on the important stories of the day. And I think a lot of our listeners, John, here feel the same way that I do. We're not slavishly committed to one perspective or another. So we want to try to get the big picture. Ground news really helps us with that. So I'm going to encourage you to help support us here at Squaring the Circle by subscribing to Ground News. You can go to this link up here, up here, or down below, and you'll be able to get the same vantage plan that I'm using here, 40% off and 5 bucks a month. I mean, that's an incredible... Uh, deal, I got to say, uh, because I have recently priced the daily newspaper here where I live. It's $2 a day. So $62 a month is what you're going to be paying for a newspaper, a printed newspaper that doesn't do even a quarter of what Ground News is doing. So now that let's get back to the show. Uh, to your point about the ripples uh, in allergenic or fallback breccia mm -hmm. of Shanghuan, there are various rock fragments from granite, diorite, uh, porphyr por porphyry. Por porphyry, 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 porphyrite, yeah, right. sandstone, siltstone, etc., and glass uh, fragments which have been devitrified and have multi-ring texture. So anything is a, or can be a liquid. It just mm -hmm, depends mm -hmm. on how hard you hit it. Yeah. And uh, whatever hit, whatever hit this, this this site was capable of liquefying granite for a short time. Yeah, and given that it's twenty miles in diameter, you're looking at an object that's at least a mile. The object, the crater is twenty miles. The object had to have been at least a mile in diameter. Now, is there anywhere in here? Oh, I see. Um, there's a shatter cone. Mm -hmm. You see, they're mm -hmm. located in the early Permian limestone. The rocks with shatter cones have the strong deformation of calcite under the microscope. Also, some large blocks of white massive limestone are surrounded by breccia with limestone fragments. Um, so, I'm going to, yeah, it gives the coordinates up there. Uh, after we conclude this, I'm going to go and... Now, in 1988, when this study was published, there was no Google Earth. Um, so how, how big did you say that that, that was going to be? About the a impactor mile? Or the, or about a mile or bigger. Typically, one-tenth to one-twentieth 
of the crater diameter is the diameter of the impactor. So let's see here. I want to do a little experiment just because okay. this is fun. This is Neil.fun asteroid launcher. Okay. Yeah. So right. a one mile impactor at 45 degrees being a stony impactor would have been uh, 16 miles wide. So let's let let's up the ante just a little bit. Or is the iron asteroid actually? It's up the ante, seventy-five thousand miles per you hour. Could, you could up the speed, or you could up up the diameter, or you could uh, the density. Any one of those things is going to increase the the radius of destruction. Here we go. Twenty-six miles wide. Okay, so that's a little, a little too much. Over. So let's let's nope. pull it back one on the speed let's pull it back to 50. okay pull our impact angle back to 50. a we'll lot hit the the 135 here sorry guys who live there 21 miles okay so we're, we're in the ball That's close enough yeah we're in the ballpark so it would have been a 38 mile wide fireball oh my gosh people in texas and oklahoma would be suffering from third degree burns oh yeah i can see the states juxtaposed there yep 245 decibel shock wave. Anyone with 112 miles would likely receive lung damage. Homes 339 miles away would collapse. Air blasts would kill many, many people and 8.4 magnitude earthquake would kill up to 6,000 people estimated here. Would be felt 310 miles away. An 8.4 earthquake. Mm-hmm. Oh, within 222 miles, it would be like being inside, I saw there, an F5 tornado. Yes. Nearly all trees within 364 miles would be knocked down. Well, this, I'm going to guess, uh, we didn't go far enough into the article if they give any dating i'm going to guess this was long before people well that's the assumption but this would have been local civilization and it would have created all sorts of horrible problems in the fallout hold on a minute you've made it this far and you haven't hit the like button or the subscribe button yet please rectify this omission you almost left without leaving a comment. If you're so inclined, please leave one because we're interested in your thoughts about the show that you just watched, the clip that you just watched. If you enjoyed the clip, the whole episode can be found here or in the description below. And if you enjoyed this content, YouTube thinks that you're also gonna like this video as well. So check it out and we'll see you soon.